just give you a quick rundown of these. It's the moisture coming up from the Gulf of Mexico. We also have, of course, that wind shear that we've been talking about, and that ha is the southeasterly winds at the surface and that strong jet stream coming in from the west. And when you get those winds shearing, in other words, coming in from different directions at different elevations in the atmosphere, that can a lot of times set you up for the potential of tornadoes. So that strong jet stream coming across and the upper level low actually caused some of the problems in Colorado, but the severe thunderstorms will be farther east. Let's take a look at what's going on right at the moment. We'll start with the radar because I want to show you these thunderstorms developing to your southwest if you live in Chicago. Very quickly, you can see how they've just erupted in the past hour or so. And this cell right about through there is crossing Interstate 57 in Moultrie County. Your warning has expired, but now in Cole and Douglas County, Coles and Douglas County, uh, this storm is coming through and potential for severe weather with it. And one of the things we're concerned about at this point is large hail, but with a tornado watch, of course, which has now been extended across Indiana, we have to be concerned about the potential for tornadic development, which we haven't seen yet. West of St. Louis, look at these thunderstorms now beginning to develop here. Right around Quincy, this cell coming through Adams County, there is a severe thunderstorm warning in effect, and it's moving quickly northeastward at 40 miles per hour. We have a number of warnings. You're just going to have to watch the screen at home, and we will pass them on to you as we can. Now, our upper level low is about through here, and our jet stream, you'll be able to see once this goes into motion. And that is, of course, bringing in the colder air around this area of low pressure and our jet stream here will add to the instability over here in sections of Missouri. So that's where we think we have the highest potential of severe thunderstorms from Missouri moving out to Illinois, Indiana, Kentucky. All of you should be in uh, watching the weather at this point through the evening. If you're going to be outdoors, watch the sky. It can turn dark quickly and thunderstorms can develop very quickly. So we are likely to see more watches issued and definitely more warnings. As we continue to monitor severe weather in the Midwest today, we take a moment to look back 10 years ago to a violent storm system. The system here spawned 10 tornadoes in the state of Texas. One of the twisters tore through the town of Sweetwater during the morning hours. Much of the town was completely destroyed. And as you can see here, one person, uh, actually not you can see here, but one person was killed and 100 others were injured. So there, 10 years ago, we did not have the Doppler radars. The kind of warning system that something was different about Myers and when I looked at it a little closer you could actually see inside the store and then I saw the fire trucks and ambulances starting to come. Interesting. Uh, what about damage to cars and, uh, and other vehicles in the area? Have you noticed any of that? Uh, well the apartments we live in are under construction and it had lifted some uh, pre- Tarring, uh, you know, putting the, the, I guess is it the tar paper, the lack of what it is on the roof where they just got the sheeting up and had rolls of it up there, and I thought to myself coming in, I don't think they're going to make that today or not. Let's take a look at our Doppler Plus radar again now, and we'll stress what's going on for you. We have tornado warnings that remain in effect now for Northern Johnson and Marion County until 8 o'clock, and also Howard or Hancock and Shelby counties until 8.15. This is our street-level map now. You see we've gone to the northern portion of Marion County and Southern Hamilton County. You see the northern edge of I-465 there. There is a secondary line, and the, uh, the intense thunderstorm is right at the intersection of 431 and uh, uh, 465, just on the due north side uh, of the city, and then also down around the Eagle Creek area uh, in Pike Township uh, and uh, Brownsburg. It's kind of a secondary line of these thunderstorms that will continue to move eastward across the area. So both north and southern portions of Marion County are getting hard hit now with not only very heavy rains, but varying sizes of hail so far, but we've had no other reports of severe weather other than that. Uh, some storm damage has occurred in Johnson County tonight, downed trees, some downed power lines, and a number of homes now without electricity. And that's a good point. If you lose your electricity, how do you keep in touch?
to know what the weather condition is in your area. Well, hopefully that's when you have the batteries and the portable radio. Right. You know, we always stress you need those fresh batteries around home, and we hope that you have those so you can listen to uh, uh, the radio station and catch up uh, on what's going on there that will keep you abreast of what's going on. And the NOAA weather radio is another item to have, which will also let you know of uh, what's going on uh, there. Uh, Kevin Shoemaker is one of our uh, sky trackers that uh, helps us out throughout the day, usually with uh, some pleasant weather, high and low temperatures. Kevin, what have you got for us now? Well, right now we're uh, just catching the tail end of uh, about pea-sized hail. Uh, we're getting heavy rain, but uh, the hail seems to slow down a bit. Okay, out of Cumberland. Thank you. That's Kevin Shoemaker. He'll give you an idea of where he is. We, uh, okay, go ahead. Tom. We have Kevin, uh, or not Kevin, we have David McNally in downtown Indianapolis right now with uh, more from just to the west of the State House tonight. Kevin, or uh, Dave? This is the situation downtown. Just in the last couple of minutes, we had a big uh, torrent move through here of water. Again, take a look in these storm sewers. We're at Ohio and Senate Street. You can see them tack. But just here in the last 30 seconds, it seems to have died down. We started seeing a little bit of hail, very small, pea-sized hail. That, uh, that seemed to pass on after just a, just a couple of moments. In fact, we collected only a couple of them on the back of our truck. Uh, the rain subsided for now. We have not uh, uh, seen any signs of any damage. There have been a few uh, fire sirens uh, passing by, unclear if that's any storm-related problem. A lot of thunder and lightning, but that too seems to have abated here uh, just in the last couple of minutes. But boy, did we get the winds. In the last live shot I did about five, six minutes ago, there was practically no wind. The rain was just falling straight. Let's get a look back here at these, at these lights. You can get an idea of the, the movement of the rain a little bit, seeing it, seeing it in the light of those trees. It's really subsided, though, right now, but it was falling straight down. And then in the last few minutes, these huge wind gusts were just, just moving that wind, taking our umbrella, moving us and our equipment a bit. Uh, but that seems to have died down now, possibly the, the piece before uh, another storm because of the, the uh, distance back that, uh, that these storms are going. But that's the, that's the latest uh, that we have down here, uh, downtown, live at the State House. Again, uh, things seem to have calmed down a bit, but we had some ferocious winds and rain just in the last few minutes. Back to you. All right, Dave, thank you. And I guess we should make the point that even though it appears to be calmer, that does not necessarily mean the danger has passed. No, not at all. Not at all. We want to stress that, that people be aware of that, because uh, the watch remains, and it remains uh, in effect for a 45-minute period anyway, really for good reason. Now. now, we're going to kind of give you a preview. Let's look off to, uh, well, uh, through the Greenwood area, Franklin, in the southwestern area. We'll bring in our street-level map. Give you a little closer look up at where the uh, more intense thunderstorm is, and you can see just to the west of Highway 9 and north of 74 uh, in the southeastern part of the area, and uh, still north of the Shelbyville area. But Shelby County, uh, of course, is under a warning, and now Rush County, which is just off to the east of that, as this storm continues to move eastward. So uh, people in the uh, Bogstown area uh, should be aware, as well as in the city of uh, Shelbyville, be aware uh, to take immediate shelter if need be. I uh, had report here of pea-sized hail. This is at uh, 62nd in Michigan. This is the northwestern side of Marion County. Here you can see the secondary line now uh, in the northwestern part, just southeast of Carmel, extending uh, back down uh, through Pike Township in uh, the northwestern sector as we zoom into that area. And the intense thunderstorm continues to move toward the east and across the southern part here of uh, Hamilton County and staying fortunately to the south of Carmel. But there's a pretty decent cell, just a little speck down here near the Zionsville area. But all of this is just inside now the I-465 loop. So it's a secondary line that has developed. And the history of these things has been to give us some intense rainfall along with the varying sizes of uh, hail and some gusty winds. But the main cell continues to drift toward the east, slowly making its way out of Marion County, on off to the east through uh, Hancock County. And now Rush and Henry counties are put under a tornado warning until... 8.45 this evening. So since we have a couple of new counties under the tornado warning, let's take a look now at those tornado safety tips once again. Whether you are in a house or whether you are in a, uh, an apartment building, the best thing to do is go to some kind of interior room. A ground level room would be the best. Also, if you're in a mobile home, you want to get out immediately and seek a more sturdy building. And if you're in a car, stop, get out, she seek some uh, shelter in a nearby ditch if possible. But by all means, uh, it's the time to do this now. It's time to take some action because the tornado warning has been issued. And again, if you see storm damage and you'd like to give us a call and tell us about it, or if you see perhaps a, a funnel cloud or even a touchdown of a tornado, you can call 639-NEWS. That's 639-6397. Okay, I understand that Bill is ready to talk to us. He can't hear us very well, so we're just going to throw it to Bill and let him talk about what's happening out near Plainfield tonight. Bill? 
All righty, Bob, we are out here along Highway 40 where we've been throughout the course of the night between uh, Belleville and Plainfield. We had a tremendous hailstorm come through here. It was about half hour to 45 minutes ago. The ground was literally covered by the hail that was falling. But you still see some of it still left over here. And in fact, some of the hail here, in fact, some of the hail here is up to about the size, well, almost the size of baseball. We had some folks come in from just a little west of our position and brought some of the hail that fell on them. And you can see we had floods of hail come through here. This is after about 45 minutes of melting. And you get a size of, or a feeling for the size of the hailstone that was here. This is still the size of about a, a lime or so. So you certainly see that uh, things are, are beginning to calm down here. Look at the size of that hailstone. If you were to cut this open, you'd see the layers going on. This gives you the folks who are, are downstream from this storm an idea of what is coming towards you. These are severe thunderstorms, as we've been telling you throughout the course of the night, and these will continue on progressing. And, of course, we'll bring you live updates as necessary with the entire SkyTrack weather and eyewitness news teams. We'll send it back to you, Bob. All right, Bill Meck doing uh, difficult duty tonight. Boy, and, was, uh, let's punch the button and show you where he is. He's back here near Plainfield, where most of the storm has already passed, and it still looks like it's... Uh, Right, uh, here, yeah, the conditions here's, out there. Here's 465 on the west side of the area here now, and of course he's in Plainfield just out uh, Highway 40. And you were talking about some of the damage reports from Greenfield. We also have a report that that's where the uh, Meyer 50 Acre store was uh, was damaged oh, as that, well. And correct. we do have another uh, confirmed touchdown now of a tornado in Morgan County, is that correct? Northern Morgan County, a confirmed uh, touchdown of a tornado there. We're going to take a two-minute break right now, and we'll be back, and we'll talk more about this severe weather. So stay with us. We'll be right back. Now, that's the current thing. Now, to back up just a bit, we were talking about uh, that, uh, that thunderstorm cell as it moved through Morgan County into Johnson County this evening. We said we thought that if there would be some damage, that would be the area in southern Marion County, and reports are coming in now. Northwestern Johnson County near Route 37, uh, Smith Valley area, three-foot trees in diameter apparently have been blown down. Two barns have destroyed, an RV lot, all vehicles have been uh, destroyed from what apparently was downburst winds. I know it makes very little difference to the person that's incurred some damage at his home, whether it was a tornado or whether it was downburst winds, uh, but in the weather business, we like to know that because that helps verify what are we seeing on radar and what actually happens in the real world. Was that indeed a tornado? So we get the warnings a little more precise. So uh, that's obviously what happens. A downburst wind is something that can come out of the leading edge of a, uh, of a thunderstorm cell. It's somewhat like uh, if you have your... Um, um, oh, the, what am I saying? The nozzle on your hose, mm -hmm. your garden hose. You turn it off. If you point that down at the ground and then all of a sudden squeeze the water on, well then, boom, that water comes out and just spreads out everywhere. This is the area where that has incurred most of the damage. We can see that. Smith Valley is along Highway 37 here. Here's I-465 uh, on the southwestern uh, part of the area, Plainfield, Mooresville, and down Highway 37 in this general area to give you an idea of where this damage uh, has taken place. And, of course, we've got people that are working on that to show you what's going on there. But here's 465, the southwest legs, 31 here, Greenwood, and then going down 37 to the east of the Mooresville area, right along the northern part of Morgan County. So that's the report that we've had. Fortunately, we've not had any reports of any injuries with any of this tonight. So hopefully the folks are uh, heeding the warnings and staying in safe places and protecting themselves as best they can. As we mentioned, there's not much you can do about the weather, but you can protect yourself and your children and your family, and that's by staying in the basement or in an interior room in the uh, uh, lowest level of your home. That's the safest place to be. Have we dodged a bullet so far by not having more tornadoes spin off of this? Well, I'm not sure. We'll have to go back and take a little more time to see, you know, what, what was the missing ingredient that we didn't have tornadoes as such. So I, I think we're fortunate in that area. Uh, one thing I know right off the top of the head is we didn't have that real juicy atmosphere that we would have uh, had we had normal temperatures or had temperatures well up into the 80s today and had higher dew point air where the air would be more moist. So, And this is at nighttime too. So you lose some of the uh, energy that helps feed these storms once you lose the day's heating. So this will work a little bit to our advantage that we're coming into the nighttime hours, but that still doesn't mean the tornadoes will not occur. Indeed, they will. And as we've been told earlier, you're back in Illinois where there's still more thunderstorms to come our way. They have reported numerous tornadoes there. So this is just part one. As you say, John, mm -hmm. we may have dodged this particular bullet, 
But this is uh, only out for a while. We still have the watch for all of Indiana until 11 o'clock tonight. So we still have kind of a long way to go before we can say this is all over with and we've all survived. A bit earlier this evening, we saw some severe rain and lightning in downtown Indianapolis. Let's take a look at our Skycam picture right now from here at Channel 13, looking back at downtown Indianapolis. And as you can see, it is uh, certainly much more clear than it was. A light rain still falling here. But uh, nonetheless, uh, the, uh, the brunt of the storm seems to have passed. It's off to the east of Indianapolis now in Rush and Henry counties. And uh, as Bob mentioned, uh, um, the tornado well, warning is still in effect there. Let's take a look real quickly. We have some uh, pictures of the hail. Isn't this fell incredible? tonight in Hendricks County. Uh, Bill Meck was out in that area earlier tonight. He was holding up some hail that was about the size of a lemon. And this is after it sat on the ground and melted for about 45 minutes. But, uh, boy, this looks like a dangerous situation out there. This is videotaped from a bit earlier this evening. Certainly not falling that way at this point. In fact, if you look at the, the radar, it's very, pretty clear back in that area. But, uh, boy, that was, that's some big-time hail coming down in Hendricks County tonight. You're looking at some videotape of downtown Indianapolis a bit earlier this evening. This is... Uh, some videotape that was taken by David McAnally and his crew tonight. He's down by the State House, and this is uh, driving through downtown Indianapolis. Rain, very heavy, very severe. Didn't get a whole lot of hail rain right in downtown Indianapolis, but certainly a whole lot of rain in a very short period of time. And of course, the sirens were sounded too when the uh, when the warning was issued for Marion County. That has expired now at eight o'clock, so it's no longer technically in effect for uh, Marion County. Uh, but uh, the siren was there. But I thought it was interesting that David seemed to say that some people were just didn't really pay a lot of attention to what was going on. I thought, well, that's, that's rather strange. Which is not the right move to make when you have a tornado warning in your area. Our weather watcher in Rushville is Mick Saunders, who teaches school over there, too, and has been a great uh, weather eye for us off to the southeast. Mick, bring us up to date, will you? Uh, the amateur radio uh, local net up collecting uh, information uh, at about 7.50 p.m. this evening on the Rush-Henry County line at Gwynville, we had... Uh, marble size to golf ball size hail and it's been moving westward at eight o'clock we had pea size hail at arlington uh, eight oh two we had dime size hail reported at henderson and at eight oh four uh, four at this location near occident we had uh, dime size hail and it's continuing uh, as we speak reports of any wind damage or anything like that that you're aware of right mick uh they are checking an unconfirmed uh Funnel cloud sighting uh, right as we speak on uh, amateur radio at this point. Okay, great. Mick, thanks very much for your help. Appreciate it. And if need be, uh, of course, call us back and we'll hear from you later on. And uh, good luck for the next uh, half hour or so over there, okay? There you can see the action back in Illinois now. This is a composite of radar and some very strong thunderstorms up in the uh, northwestern part of the area there. will give you an idea of uh, what's going on in Illinois and the northwestern part of Indiana. But then that line just uh, kind of thins out a bit, but still some individual uh, strong thunderstorm cells in central Illinois. And then it picks up again, uh, well, west of the Terre Haute area. I'm trying to make this out on the map. And that extends south of St. Louis back across the southwestern part of Missouri. Uh, the point of all of this is that uh, it's going to take quite a while for all of these lines to move eastward. We have received uh, unconfirmed but numerous reports of tornadoes in Illinois, not in Indiana, in Illinois. So that does mean that those thunderstorms that remain there, even in the darkness of night, uh, can be quite severe. So we have that to deal with yet as this stuff continues to come uh, eastward into Indiana. And it's probably going to be much later this evening, maybe before 11 o'clock if we're lucky. But uh, 11 o'clock is the time that the folks at the Severe Storms Forecast Center picked as the optimum time that this should be over with. Well, we have a gentleman on the phone from Greenwood right now. Joe, uh, can you tell us what you saw down there tonight and how much damage you have around you? Oh, well, it's Jill, actually. Jill, okay. Uh, yeah, about 7 o'clock when the storm came through Greenwood, we got about 2-inch size hail that came down and some real strong winds. Um, we can't see any damage, but we're across the golf course from the Meyer store where it was reported that the roof came off, but we can't see anything now. There were a lot of sirens and a lot of emergency vehicles at the time. Are you in? Are you in your home, uh, Jill? Yes, sir. What? What are you? Where are you watching from? If we might ask, what have you done with your family to uh, protect yourself? Well, we don't have a basement, but we went to our ground level. We have an interior uh, hallway with a small bathroom, and we took shelter in there. Do this before? Yes. Yes. So you have experience, uh, and if you don't mind my asking this, do you have youngsters? Uh, 
Uh, no, we have pets, and we rounded them up and brought them in there, too. We got in there about 15 minutes before, and uh, we still have power, so we were able to hear your broadcast. Okay. Well, we thank you very much, and uh, pardon me for, you know, asking those questions without talking to you first, but it's just... It's just nice to know of how some people will heed the warnings and what they do, and you just never know. Important issues when you have a weather situation like this tonight, and those are important things to ask. One of the things we've talked about in the past that I've found here in, in the, we, we have so many, uh, um, I don't want to say, well, latchkey, I guess you talk about youngsters that are home alone when both parents have to work in the late afternoon hours is when the, most of these storms will develop. Where do they go in the house? And sometimes these kids can be uh, maybe more afraid of storms than they should be. We're going to get some thunderstorms coming up, but uh, you want to set aside an area in your home where these youngsters can go and play on a good day, where they have their transistor radio or some stuffed animals or books to read or their record players or whatever. And then when a storm does occur, they can go to that area in their home, and it's a familiar place. It isn't anything that they have to be overly anxious about. It's just another experience that they've already gone through, right. so it is familiar territory. Well, we do have severe weather tonight in central Indiana. Let's take a look at some videotape that we shot earlier tonight of lightning in downtown Indianapolis. This is a view from the, uh, well, I guess, the east side of town, or the west side of town. And you can see, uh, as we slow it down here, the lightning strikes that we had over the city tonight. This videotape taken a bit earlier tonight. A severe storm came through. We haven't seen a lot of uh, tornado activity spinning off. I guess we have a couple of reports of touchdowns. But uh, generally speaking, it's been uh, fairly calm as far as that goes. However, we have had severe rain tonight all across central Indiana, a lot of lightning and hail, very heavy in some spots. And the potential for some flash flooding exists as rainfall amounts well over an inch has been reported at the airport. This is live sky cam look now looking uh, south uh, from uh, the uh, downtown area, looking east, I'm sorry, uh, from the downtown area there, giving you an idea what's going on. And we have another one of your sky trackers on the phone. We have Jeannie Roberts from over in Greenfield tonight. Jeannie, what are you uh, seeing out your window? Well, currently we have quite a lot of rain. It was uh, a lot more torrential earlier. It slowed down somewhat, and we had some pea-sized hail. In our particular neighborhood, with a, we have a lot of old trees, but we don't have any branches or anything down that I can see. Um, the wind has picked up a great deal, though, compared before the rain was coming down straight down, and now it's definitely more windy. I don't have a rainfall amount. I haven't gone out. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a smart weather watch. There you go. <laughs> that's a smart weather watch. Jeannie, th thank you very much. I don't, I don't blame you at all. If you look at the radar here, that's, that's kind of on the tail end of the of the brunt of the storm. Right, now it's moved on over and heading toward the Newcastle area and then through the eastern portion of Rush County, as you can see there. And again, reminding you that, uh, uh, that the uh, warnings for tornadoes exist in Henry and Rush counties until 8.45 this evening. We just passed the 8.15 mark, so uh, I, the uh, uh, warnings for Hancock and uh, Shelby counties have expired, as well as the one for Marion County. That, of course, expired uh, at 8 o'clock this evening. But other pretty decent thunderstorms still across the southern part of Hamilton County between Noblesville uh, and the Anderson area, as you see with our identifiers there on our uh, radar scan as we're taking a look up there. So uh, we fortunately have not had that much reported uh, through Hamilton County or in the Carmel area. It's and we have a report now from one of our viewers, Steve Richards. He is calling from south of Lebanon. And uh, Steve, I understand you had some damage up there tonight. Yes, I have a Florida room roof on my roof, and I'm looking to, uh, for someone to uh, get it down before the next storm comes through. I'm afraid it'll tear up our house a lot worse than it already has. Now, this is something we haven't heard about, uh, damage up in Boone County tonight. Uh, oh. Most of the damage that we've heard about has been south of Indianapolis and Greenfield and, uh, and uh, in the Morgan County south area. Indianapolis, sir. I'm sorry? We are south of Indianapolis. We're in the Greenwood area. Well, I thought oh, you yeah. were in Lebanon. I, I'm sure. sorry. I misunderstood. So this is uh, consistent with what we've been nope. uh, hearing all night, damage uh, confined to south of uh, Indianapolis. Yeah, okay. I thought, yeah, I thought he said Lebanon, too. So anyway, so this is not your, it obviously belongs to a neighbor or something. Oh, he must be gone. Is he gone? Rim. He's okay. gone. Okay. okay. Well, uh, that uh, you know that fits in then, I guess, with the exactly what had happened uh, earlier that we thought northern Johnson County, northern Morgan County, where the potential is there for a tornado. And uh, it, again, we mentioned to you because uh, it uh, it really doesn't make any difference to you if you incur damage, whether it was a tornado or downburst winds, but it does help the whole process now as far as uh, storms are concerned. 
because when we look at radar, we're expecting to see one thing, and uh, if we can, and uh, uh, we want to be sure that, that when you give the tornado warnings that you have uh, the actual weather to go ahead and, and match what the warning is, I guess is what I'm trying to say here. Uh, trying to figure out what I'm trying to say. I'll let you take it here. For okay. A okay. Well, we're going to actually take a break right now. We're going to regroup here, and we'll be back with more coverage of this severe weather system in just a moment. Uh, we have a, another viewer on the telephone. Yes, we, do. we have Jenny Smiley from Hazelwood. And Jenny, tell me, what do you see out your window tonight? Um, our windows are broken, and our on the back of the house, and the siding's dented in, and our back porch, all the screens are tore up. Where, where are you calling from? Hazelwood. And, you, and where is that now? Um, near Plainfield. Near Plainfield, okay. Okay, just want to be sure, again, the southern part of the area, that seems right. to be... What we'll do is put all of this together. You still with us there? Are you? Jenny, did we lose you? Well, we apparently uh, lost okay. Jenny. But, uh, and now we have Sky Tracker Kim Morris on the phone to tell us uh, what things are like in his area tonight. Kim? Yeah. Go ahead. How you doing tonight? Well, we're busy. How are you? Uh, you can hear me <laughs> picking up glass. Our bedroom's full of glass and hail balls. Is that right? Yeah, How big was the hail that you saw, Kim? Well, I was in Peregrine when a neighbor called me and said, out on my windows out of my house, so I come up here from work. We got, uh, there's still hail balls piled up against the back of the house, size of tennis, tennis balls. Is that right? How are, how, how's your family and kids? Everybody all right? Yeah, they were all down south with some friends, so we got lucky there, but I guess just south of me about a mile, I got hit worse. There was, a, I guess, a tornado touched down in the Fox Hill area. Okay. They've got uh, Decatur Township, Mooresville in there, trying to get, just get people out that's trapped. Okay. But uh, there's a lot of, everybody's windows and cars got tore up, their roofs. Hmm. My pool strung across the front of the yard. Oh, it's been a long time since you've seen something like this, I'll bet. Uh, that one we had in November, what, two years ago? Uh, about that? Yeah, that one got us in. We just got a new roof. Now we're going to get another one. Oh, boy. Hmm. Kim, thanks very much for the call. Okay, Bob. All right, good to talk to you. Kim Morris, he's been helping us out here for several years, so giving us reports of what's going on. That, of course, is... Oh, we have... Uh, this is a new watch area now that has just been handed me. And it's been extended. This is a watch for tornadoes. And they have a new one. It covers most of the state of Indiana. And I'm sad to report they have extended this until 5 o'clock in the morning. So, indeed, they're seeing a great deal of something going on back in uh, Illinois uh, that would uh, preclude them to uh, uh, extend a watch area for this length of time. I mean, that's, that's incredible. Normally, five or six hours. But to bring something around until 5 a.m. Well, it's 4 a.m. our time. It's 5 a.m. Eastern Daylight. I'm sorry. Here we check our times because it takes in uh, Ohio as well. So it really is 4 a.m. Uh, Indiana time. But that's what? Eight and a half hours from now. That's uh, that's quite a quite a box. So uh, indeed, it just you just see what happens. But we might mention that these these boxes really come out of uh, our Storm Prediction Center, which is located uh, uh, in uh, in Kansas City, soon to be moved down at Norman, Oklahoma. Uh, these people are specialists. That's all they do is take a look at the uh, uh, atmosphere, and they try to determine where the potential is for the greatest occurrence for severe weather. They're the folks that will issue the watch areas, the big boxes that we talk about, where the potential for these thunderstorms will occur. And then when the warning process begins, that's when the local weather service office, as uh, the case is here in Indianapolis, will issue the warnings, which are usually of a half hour, 45 minute duration. Mm -hmm. Now we have a caller on the phone. We have Mike Lair from Park County reporting some damage tonight. Tell me about the damage you had out of your house tonight, Mike. Oh, all the cars are just beat up the whole top. Uh, I've got one piece of hail I measured that's six inches in diameter. It, it went on for about 15 minutes. I've got four cracks in the skylight and it's leaking. The whole front, all the vinyl siding got holes in it. The north end of the house has holes in it. And uh, it broke the frame on the north window. It was incredible. Nobody, no, no one heard or anything no, like that, no. though. How did you first find out about this, if we can? Well, uh, I was driving home from work, and I drove through some smaller hill, about three-quarter inch diameter, and there was one little break in it, and I got into the house, and it just came down. It sounded like sledgehammers pounding on the roof. Wow. Wow. Well, we appreciate the, uh, appreciate the call and the input from, from you and all the other viewers that have taken the time to call in and kind of 
share their experience with us. This note I had. Two here. roofs were blown off at uh, Smith Valley Road and State Road 37 in Johnson County. One and a half inch hail fell at Interstate 74 and London Road in Marion County. Roofs off homes at Stop 11 Road and Bluff Road in Marion County. Golf ball sized hail at I-74 in Northwest Shelby County. Wind and hail damage to uh, businesses at State Road 37 and Southport Road uh, in Marion County. A roof off a of Meyer store in Southport and uh, Emerson. Uh, oh, Southport and Emerson, that in Marion County. I guess we've told you about that. Uh, severe thunderstorms over east central Indiana, uh, southern Henry and eastern Rush County, uh, 40 miles east of Indianapolis, from Newcastle to Rushville, and the storms continue to move toward the Connersville, Richmond area. And we have somebody on the phone, I guess, John? We have Deb Bowling. She's calling tonight from uh, Morgan County. And uh, where about in Morgan County are you calling from, Deb? Okay, I'm right up in the northern corner, right outside of Marion County and Johnson County. All right, and what kind okay, of damage have you sustained? right off of Mann Road. Okay, and what kind of damage did you have there tonight? Pardon? What kind of damage did you have tonight? Okay, right before dark, we had a lot of hail. The hail was anywhere between the size of a golf ball and a softball. That's wow. how big it was. It was hitting on our roof. We felt the roof moving. My daughter, her two kids, my husband and I went to the bathroom, and we could hear water coming up through the drain. This all took place in about five to ten minutes. When we came out, we saw buildings are completely turned upside down. Part of the are down. We have a building next to us, which is our garage. It's completely gutted. It was out of cement block, and the cement block is all over our acre of land. All of our stuff is scattered everywhere. Our house, the only particular thing is we have two windows completely busted out, and the roof is messed up. That sounds like some uh, yeah. possible tornado activity Between down there. Between here and one mile from here is a grade school, an elementary school called North Madison School. Between here and there, we are being told that there are houses that are completely gone. Windows are blown out of some. Roofs are completely off of others. And I have a, we have a great big pole barn. We don't, but neighbors do, uh, probably 30 feet from my patio. And it is completely laying on the ground. Well, the important question, I think, uh, for you and your family, is everybody okay? Did you come through it okay? We're just in shock, I guess. And uh, we have no electricity. We can't go anywhere because there's power lines down all over the place. So we're sitting here with candlelight. Yeah, well, you um, have our best wishes. I guess that's all we can say is just hang in there tonight and be patient. Uh, as we mentioned, they've got the power and light crews are out trying to do the best they can. We've had, what... 15,000 folks without power here uh, throughout the area um, right now, so they're working as fast as they can. And they, I, I never understand how these people can get out there and work anyway when you still have the thunderstorms and all the dangerous lightning that's around uh, to begin with. So, uh, you know, we, uh, we're just glad that uh, everybody, the people, are safe. Unfortunately, not much you can do about your property, and that, that's, that's really... That's bad. Well, anyway, let's uh, take a look at a couple of graphics here to bring you up to date now. The watch, of course, uh, has been extended for the potential for tornadoes until 5 o'clock tomorrow morning. Essentially, it covers the entire state of Indiana, so we're concerned about that because of uh, what's going on back in Illinois and in Missouri. There are plenty of storms uh, farther out to the west. Those have to move through the area. This will give you an idea of some of the action that is taking place now. Very intense thunderstorms, really, from Indianapolis on up east of Chicago, you see now, uh, out into the Great Lakes area, moving into the southwestern part of uh, Michigan, and then other thunderstorms back in Iowa, scattered all through eastern Illinois, and then southwest of Terre Haute, another line of thunderstorms extends from there southwestward through Missouri, south of St. Louis. All of this stuff has to come east and a little bit probably to the northeast as this area of low pressure in the system finally brings this stuff uh, to and through our area. Thus, uh, the folks have seen fit to uh, extend the watch for the potential of tornadoes throughout Indiana, much of the Midwest that extends uh, into Ohio as well, but that uh, includes our area until uh, 4 o'clock in the morning. Uh, let me correct myself. It's 4 o'clock Indiana time, Eastern Standard Time, 5 o'clock for the folks over in Ohio. That's how I got mixed up is because it's the watch does cover so much part of uh, Ohio we as have, well. Uh, Kathy Harlan, one of our viewers from Southern Marion County tonight. And uh, Kathy, tell us what kind of damage did you have in your area? Well, actually, we were pretty fortunate, all things considered. Um, I have two cracked windows in my upstairs. I live in an apartment. I live in a brick apartment building. And um, 
the two front bedroom windows are cracked, and I did see some dents in some car, like the hoods. But other than that, we were pretty fortunate. What kind of hail did you have down there tonight? Oh, golf ball size, easily. And was it uh, intense for a long period of time, or did it come by pretty quickly? Oh, I'd say a fairly long time. We have a fire station down just down the street, and the siren was going, and the wind was very, very intense. And the, the hail and the wind and everything, it was pretty darn frightening. Uh, did you do the right thing and uh, take the proper precautions at the time? Yes, sir, I did. Well, you're going to want to uh, keep track of what's going on throughout the night. Uh, as we've been mentioning, we have a, a tornado watch in effect until 4 a.m. Indiana time. So it's uh, no time to let your guard down, even though it looks calm now. There's another line of storms that Thank is you. Thanks very much. Well, as, as we said, the storm has left its mark here. The most severe damage, there's been scattered reports of damage all throughout the area, but the most severe areas were in Johnson and Morgan counties tonight. In fact, we have Raquel Bahamunde, who is at the Friendly Village Mobile Home Park at this hour. Let's go to you, Raquel, and find out what's happening there. That's right, Mike and Debbie. There is scattered damage everywhere you turn here on the south side. I'm in the Friendly Trailer Friendly Trailer Park in, um, on County Line, just east, just west, I'm sorry, of 135 on County Line Road and Peterman. There is damage to this trailer park. There is skirting that is ripped off on several of these mobile homes, as Jack's showing you right now. Um, there's some power lines down in this area. The roads are blocked off. Traffic is awful. If you are out and about tonight, please do not come down to Johnson County because everywhere you turn, there are fire trucks. There are people. There's trees down all over. We are being told that there are 15,000 customers without power down here on the south side. Joining me now is Michael Ham. He's a resident here, lived right next door, and he was here when all this happened. Michael, can you tell me what it was like? Well, uh, like I said before, I, I've lived in a mobile home for 13 years, and uh, this was the first time in the 13 years that I actually, I think I got scared about it, that I actually covered up and was wondering what was going to happen. The wind was blowing pretty hard, the trailer was rocking, and the first thing when it was all over that I got out here and saw was this trailer next door to me, and then it's kind of like, is it done or is it not done? So I waited for a while and then I finally came out to look at the damage and see what was going on in my place, which I didn't get hit quite as bad as the neighbors here. I understand you have kids too. Did you grab them and run? Oh yeah, I had this one right here and we got all all covered up with what we could do because I didn't really think it was going to be that bad and we just threw some cushions over the top of us and threw the comforter over us and hope it would work out right and it did. So. Did you have any damage to your trailer? Uh, just kind of the skirting on the back corner of mine was knocked down, but it's still there that I can pick it back up and put it back together tomorrow. You've been walking the neighborhood with some of your neighbors. What else have you seen? Uh, it's kind of like everything down south of us is okay. It kind of took a swath through here about 400 yards wide that went in this direction on up. So down the street's not bad. Uh, through here is basically all skirting knocked down, basically on the south side, awnings. Some people are picking up things in their yard that belong in the yard next door. All right, Michael, thanks a lot for joining us. Uh -huh. As you can see, Jack's shown some more of the damage that's next to uh, Michael Ham's trailer, and it seems like he escaped most of the seriousness of this down here. Residents are kind of out and about picking up what Michael said is was once theirs, and now it's in other people's yards. So like I said, down here on the south side, it's a mess. There are trees down everywhere, power lines down. There are police and firemen everywhere stopping traffic. There are long lines of traffic. So if at all possible, don't come down to see what's down here. Stay home because the traffic is just a mess. Okay, Back Raquel. to you, Mike Debbie. Very good. Thank you. Raquel is a news producer here at News 8, pressed into That's service right. tonight because she happened to be down there in the area. Well, um, and, and what she says is a very good uh, caution about to the drivers to stay out of the area because these power crews are having a hard time getting to the locations right. where the lines are down. One of the other areas that we mentioned that has been hit hard, and we have a crew on the way there, is in Morgan County. Uh, we don't know yet the extent of all that, but we hope you have a live report there. Let's take a look with our tower cam now down Illinois Street and find out what the current conditions are at this hour in downtown Indianapolis. And judging from our camera, which is atop a, a tall tower here at the uh, Channel 8 parking lot, not much rain right now in central Indiana. As Steve has pointed out, a lot of the storms have passed by, but there's another wave coming a little bit later in the night here. This is the lull between the storms, I guess exactly. you'd say, in that case. Well, of course, we'll continue to be on top of this throughout the evening. More reports to follow. I'm Mike Ahern. And I'm Debbie. Illinois is now entering the state, and now a tornado warning has been posted for Fountain and also into Warren County, the Eastern counties right here. This area of thunderstorms that you're seeing right here moved through Champaign, Illinois, Urbana. Two tornadoes touching down there. At least that's the preliminary report and some damage being caused there. We're also finding some strong thunderstorms now entering the south central.
part of the state. You can see those thunderstorms uh, stretching across what uh, looks like is going to be moving to the east now and uh, east-northeast, these thunderstorms here and also the thunderstorms to the north. Take a little wider picture of things on Next Red Doppler radar and you can find we've got two areas of thunderstorms, one across the northern part of the state and then these thunderstorms now entering the western part of the state and then stretching all the way across the south. These will enter the picture as we go through the rest of the evening. So the tornado warning in effect for Fountain and Warren counties, that goes until 10.15 p.m. Other than that, we have the tornado watch that covers most of the area. That runs until 4 a.m., and that's because we've got more of this stuff headed our way. We'll have more details about the storms coming up. Mike and Debbie? All right, Steve, thank you. Of course, locally, the two areas hit hardest this evening were in uh, well, southeast Marion County, also northern Johnson and Morgan County. Uh, got hit pretty hard by tornadoes. Uh, we understand there's a market called the Friendly, well, the Friendly Village Mobile Home Park, for one thing, was uh, hit hard by a tornado this evening. No injuries there, but they believe they might have a gas leak, we understand, now in that area. So uh, people are being taken out of there. And also the Hampton Market, that's a long-time market down on the south side along County Line Road. Mm -hmm. Its entire roof was sheared off and then driven into the back of the, the place. No injuries again in that case. So. They also are centering uh, rescue efforts and uh, rescue efforts actually in White River Township yeah. right now and Clark Townships. They have uh, confirmed that two tornadoes did touch down in those areas. They have damage along 135 in Smith Valley. And in Clark Township, they have power lines down and trees down. And, of course, traffic uh, has come to a standstill because of the, the trees down. And police are asking that folks stay off the roads if they can. Heavy hail throughout the area this evening. Some uh, roofs blown off barns and sheds. Mm -hmm. uh, power lines down everywhere. Trees are down. People, again, asking motorist sightseers to stay away so they can get these 15,000 homes that are without power to get that power back on tonight. So far in Johnson County, we are told there are no injuries reported in Johnson County this evening. However, that's just one of the areas hit by the storm tonight. And we have about 15,000 people that we know of right now who do not have power, Still but that, yeah. that number may go up as the evening goes on. Uh, and that's just about what we have right now. Okay, and of course, we'll be here throughout the evening. And a full report tonight on News 8 at 11 o'clock. I'm Mike Ahern. And I'm Debbie Nye. Uh, the end of the funnel just going round and around and it was just full of all kinds of debris and then you got the hail show me the hail that came down on your on your car this one of them and how big was it when it started well this one here probably was a quarter of an inch bigger it's about two and two and a quarter inches now it's a baseball size oh yeah thank you hugh doty that's a, thank you yeah. that's a situation here a lot of that and the wind coming in another storm coming david McAnally live in johnson county all right david we'll check back with you later as well and uh, you want to give us one more shot okay. here yeah here goes we're in a uh, tornado watch situation now until four o'clock in the morning it does cover all of the uh, channel 13 viewing area here's a radar loop now showing you why this watch is in effect now this is showing all of the storms moving out of Illinois. Two lines, one in northwestern uh, Indiana, the other two are southwest. All of that is coming eastward. This is the Doppler radar, and here to the southwest, you can see some strong thunderstorms moving in. But again, persons uh, in the Attica area, be alert, because some strong thunderstorms will be moving into your area in the next 20 minutes by 9.50 p.m. So a severe thunderstorm warning for uh, folks down in Johnson and Shelby counties to the south, that until 10.15. And we'll have more on this tonight at 10 and 11 on Eyewitness News. Until then, I'm John Stair along with Bob Gregory, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. This has been a special report from Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Good evening, I'm Debbie Knox. And I'm Mike Ahern. Let's bring you up to date right now on the storm damage this evening. The storm struck all across the central and southern view area tonight, but the most severe damage appears to be in Johnson and Morgan counties and also southwest Marion County. We're going to have a live report from that area in just a moment now, but earlier the storm struck in several counties west of here, including Hendricks County. In fact, a Hendricks County man knew better than to stay in his mobile home when the storms rolled through his home near Coatesville. That mobile home is now considered a total loss. The home actually got hung up on a tree, but that prevented it from rolling even further. About 10 miles southeast of Coatesville, in Belleville off US-40, lightning struck power lines there. The lines were alive and arced, making it almost impossible for firefighters to put out the flames. And in Avon, meanwhile, marble-sized hail fell for about 15 minutes, covering the ground like snow. And we can tell you that in Circle Center downtown, the threat of severe weather caused the evacuation of that mall. But uh, shoppers were guided into the garages until that storm passed. And all this time tonight, about 15,000 homes or so were without power. Several homes were damaged, including the Friendly Village Mobile Home Park. That's in Johnson County. But Marion County wasn't spared, and some of the worst damage was in the southwest part of Marion County, along Stop 11 Road. We have Scott Swan live at the scene now to tell us what happened down there. Scott? Mike, Debbie, uh, yes, we are at the uh, Valley Ridge Farms area of Marion County, where... Approximately nine homes were destroyed by a tornado that blew in here at about 7.15 tonight. We've got Derek Bradburn of the 
Perry Township Fire Department joining us right now to give us an idea as you look at pictures of one of the homes that was uh, destroyed tonight. Derek, tell us tonight what uh, what you've uh, what you've seen. Okay, we got the call about 7:20, and our first unit arrived here. Um, he was met with heavy debris in the streets and noticed several homes were damaged and automatically called for more help. You uh, had a total of nine that were damaged here in this Valley Ridge uh, Farms area. How many are destroyed at this point? Right now we've got three that are uninhabitable. Um, like you said, we've got nine that are, that are pretty much uh, pretty heavily damaged. Give us an idea of injuries. Okay, we had one injury uh, when we first arrived. Um, it was a lady that had breathing problems. She was treated on the scene and released. She didn't, didn't require transport to the hospital. Uh, estimate of damage at this point? So it's too early. We don't even have one. What, uh, when you guys arrived here, what was the, the mood like in terms of neighbors coming out of homes and neighbors that were still in their homes at the time that the uh, tornado came through? Um, to my understanding, uh, everybody was still pretty much in shock. They were out looking around, surveying the damage of their homes. Uh, the way I understand it, there was a co couple close calls. Uh, people didn't expect it as soon as it came. Um, they were pretty much in shock. You're, you're looking right now at the, at the home that it appears to be the second worst damaged here. Again, this is the Valley Ridge Farms area in Marion County. Uh, that was a, uh, an owner, and we talked to the owner a few minutes ago, and he said that his roof absolutely blew in. He said he and his daughter were inside the home at the time of the, the tornado came, and all he saw was a gray cloud. Is that, what, is that a, sort of a typical reaction of the people that you've been talking to about what they saw? Right, they were all um, they were all very surprised. They all said that they were watching the TV and stuff, watching the storm and stuff. Um, but they were all surprised at the, at the quickness that the wind came up, and they're not sure if it was a wind or a tornado. Let's, uh, Jack. Let's turn around here and give uh, folks at home an idea of what's been set up here. Give us an idea, Derek, if you would, uh, of what you've set up in terms of a command center. Uh, how are residents being handled here? Okay. Right now, we've got the uh, Mecca Command Van here. All the uh, officials from the Sheriff's Department, the Perry Township Fire Department, the uh, Sheriff's Department, um, Emergency Management. Um, we've got some members from IFD here also. They're all in there running, uh, running the command structure from there. Um, as I said, we've got American Red Cross on the scene. They're going to help um, displaced residents if they need any assistance tonight. Again, just to give you an idea of, uh, of the damage, there are damaged homes on both sides of the street. And Jack, if you would just sort of pan down here. Uh, this cir uh, street sort of circles back to the right, and it appears, if uh, Jack, if you can focus in on that home that we were looking at before, that home, again, one of the, uh, the most heavily damaged homes in the area. Uh, uh, their wife, I guess, was out bowling tonight, didn't even know about the tornado, and the husband and, and daughter were at home and had to, uh, had to weather through this damaged area. Are there lots of trees? Give us an idea uh, of some of the areas that we cannot see, Derek, of some of the, uh, the areas here that we cannot see in terms of what damage is, is okay. there. Um, like you stated, there's, there are homes damaged on both sides of the street here, and there's also some damage behind these houses that you can't see, uprooted trees, things along that nature. One thing we want to remind everybody, if your power should happen to go out, to be extra careful when you're burning candles. That's uh, Derek Bradburn from the uh, Perry Township Fire Department. Thank you for joining us tonight. Again, uh, this is the Valley Ridge Farms area in Marion County. A tornado blowing in about 7.15 tonight, uh, damaging nine homes. Three of them are uninhabitable, and residents right now, some are here in the command center. Others are trying to find a place to live. Uh, Mike Debbie will send it back to you at this point. All right, Scott, very good. Thank you. Scott Suave reporting live from the scene. Well, the storms are going to continue rolling through the area. Let's get to Steve Bray now for the very latest on that. Well, we do have a couple of warnings still in effect. For Warren and Fountain counties, there's uh, still a tornado warning in effect, but the storm causing that has now moved into Tippecanoe County. We may see actually a warning pop up for that county. That is definitely a possibility, but we have not received that yet from the National Weather Service. This storm system uh, responsible for some tornadic activity around Champaign, Illinois, but the storm has hung together and moved all the way into Indiana. We'll continue to move across north central part of the state, across southern parts, South Central Indiana, we're finding some strong thunderstorms here as well. Right now, the only warning we have in effect is for Johnson and Shelby counties. That's a severe thunderstorm warning, not a tornado warning. The intensity of the east storm seems to be a little bit less, and tornadic activity not as much of a problem. At least that's what we're expecting. But these areas have been hard hit already and now seeing some more storms. Show you next, Rad. Show you a little bit wider view again. You can see the stream of strong thunderstorms tailing all the way down into southern Illinois. These continue to move in our direction. Here's that isolated thunderstorm around Lafayette area. And then more in northern Indiana causing some damage up there. 
These will move across South Central and maybe even into the Indianapolis area. That's a little bit too early to tell right now. They're kind of moving to the east, but may shift a little bit more to the northeast. And then again, this storm should stay north of uh, most of central Indiana. So it looks like we're going to see some isolated stuff at least for the next several hours. Tornado watch for the entire area until 4 a.m. Mike and Debbie? So it's really fair to say that we ought to stay uh, stay with the coverage here uh, for some period of time. These storms are going to keep coming. Yeah, unless unless they die down. Now, there is a chance with the temperatures cooling off. We're now dropping down to the 60s. The rain moving through helped to cool off the temperatures. When you lose that heat, you lose a lot of the intensity of the thunderstorms. So hopefully these things will blow through harm, more less harmless than the are uh, more or less violent than I should say than the storms that moved through earlier. Now we have the cold front that's moving through. Once that sweeps through, we should see all of this activity come to an end. So it should end fairly quickly later on tonight. But the watch is a precautionary measure until 4 a.m. They may not actually hang around that long. Okay. Thank you, Steve. Another area hit hard this evening was in uh, Mooresville, near Mooresville in Morgan County. Let's go to Anna Warner. She's live at the scene right now. Anna? Mike, uh, what you have down here is an area where they're holding residents who can't get back to their homes. When the, uh, when the storm came through, there were numerous homes in the area that were damaged. Power lines were taken down, and of course, that's a dangerous situation with you have live power lines on the ground. So at this point, they're not letting anybody go back into that area. In fact, authorities at this point are having trouble determining what exactly happened back there. They do know that numerous homes were, in fact, damaged. Morgan County Sheriff Terry Weddle joins me now. What can you say for certain at this hour is happening down there? That we are still trying to uh, get to a lot of the homes to make sure there, there are no injuries. Uh, we, we have no idea at this time how many homes have been damaged. Uh, the northeast part of the county, uh, right here in Madison Township, has been hit pretty hard. Uh, we've set up an emergency uh, settlement over here at North Madison School. That's where my uh, temporary headquarters will be tonight. And uh, we've got people out working every place. But one of our problems, and, uh, and I'd like to stress, has been the, some of the residents up here uh, are more or less just being nosy and they're, they're getting in the way. Sightseers, and you'd like them to go home and let you guys get what you need to get done. That's right. Here, right. I would appreciate them doing that. Okay. In the meantime, there are numerous cars and residents out here who uh, basically can't get back to their homes. We've talked to people who have relatives with small children down there who uh, don't know what happened has happened to those relatives. We talked to one woman who was told that her daughter's house had suffered severe damage. She doesn't know what happened to the daughter, her husband, and her two children. So um, they're still trying to iron out exactly what kind of damage they have down here. But uh, as you heard the sheriff say, hit pretty hard down here, Mike and Debbie. Okay, Anna, thank you. And just to give you an idea of how violent this storm was, we have here, let's yeah. get a shot of that if we can. There it is. There uh, this is some of the hail. This is one piece of hail that right. fell in Greenwood. A little smaller than a tonight. baseball, yeah. but not that much smaller. This is a lot. This would damage your car or house, whatever it would hit. This is hard, this is hard as a rock. Yeah, Jeez. and then there's a lot of that out there, too. Right. So quite a night. And of course, at 11 o'clock, we're going to have a complete rundown for you. Steve will update us on the storms that are still out there mm -hmm. that may be hitting yet tonight. I'm Mike Ahern. And I'm Debbie Knox. We'll see you tonight. Later. All right, Steve, thanks. Now let's assess the damage. Central Indiana was swept by hail, lightning, heavy rains, many reports of funnel clouds tonight. Now, the winds were ferocious, even if it turns out they were not confirmed tornadoes, all of them. That matters little to people who report serious damage in many areas. IPL reports more than 8,000 homes remain without power. We have two reports tonight. Let's begin with News 8 Scott Swan in southern Marion County. Scott? That's right, my Debbie. The uh, lightning continues, thunder overhead, a steady drizzle right now, and we're standing in front here in Southport, this is the Valley Ridge Farms neighborhood. Uh, we're in uh, Marion County, just north of the County Line Road, standing in front of what used to be a two-story home. Uh, this uh, tornado or high winds or whatever you want to call it tonight literally sheared the second story off of one of these homes. This home is one of nine homes damaged, and you can maybe see one of the rocking chairs that is uh, uh, literally hanging above the door. Uh, one of the few items left in this neighborhood. Again, we're in the Valley Ridge Farms neighborhood. I want to show you a map of where we are today. Again, I mentioned that we are in Southport, 10 miles south of Indianapolis. That's north of County Line Road. Apparently, uh, tornadoes touched down on both sides of County Line Road, both in uh, Johnson County and in Marion County. Back live now, I want to go ahead and uh, roll in some video of Gary Osteen, who is a... Uh, neighbor here in the Valley Ridge Farms area who had assessed his damage. He was at home with his daughter 
at about 7.15 tonight when he began hearing hail. He was watching the Weather Channel, began looking outside, saw hail coming in, and knew that he was in trouble. Let's hear from Gary. All I saw was like, I looked out the window and all I saw was it was just a cloud, just a big cloud. And, and I heard a, uh, a roar. So I ran down the hallway and said, oh my God. And I grabbed her and pulled her off the bed and covered her up with the, the, the quilt. And about that time, the, uh, the windows were blowing out. And it was, I mean, it's, all I did was we were covered up and when after it all stopped, I raised up and I looked up and there was, I could see the sky. The hail started and all the typical things. You start hearing the roar and it got quiet and we just started trying to run through the house and my husband, the front part of our house blew in and my husband was thrown up against the wall and we were in the back so we were all right and we're, we're very lucky. Only one minor injury tonight according to Perry Township Fire Department. The tornado was very selective. It didn't ruin all of the homes in this neighborhood. Nine were damaged, three were destroyed, and you can look across the street. That home is fine. Two, uh, two homes down is fine. This one got really hit hard. A couple doors down, that one got hit hard, so it really depended, but this thing was very selective. Let's go back to you now, Mike and Debbie. Okay, thank you very much, Scott. Well, now to Morgan County, where damage to homes is reported in an area outside Mooresville in the northeastern part of that county. Authorities, in fact, are still trying to get a handle on how bad things are down there. News 8's Anna Warner joins us now with a story. Anna? Mike and Debbie, Morgan County Sheriff's Police have established a command post just across the road from this convenience station at North Madison Elementary School. That is where they are asking many residents to go. Those residents who right now cannot return to their homes. Those homes are back off in the area behind this convenience store and gas station and also off to that area there. The sheriff says he knows of at least six homes where roofs have been torn off. We know of at least one trailer home that has apparently been destroyed. Uh, so far, though, they are still trying to determine the extent of any injuries here. Frankly, they're not sure. They really can't get back in there because there are still live power lines on the ground. The wind is still picking up here, and frankly, that's not going to help them with the power line repairs. There are also trees down across the road that makes it difficult for them to get back. We talked to a lot of residents here, many of whom are very, very startled by this whole incident. There was hail. It was to totally black. We came down Smoky Row. Every house down there is gone. It turned tore trees up and uh, took half the road with it when it went. Right back over to the left of us, uh, which is not part of the Fox Hill area, uh, I've seen at least six houses over in there with the roofs gone off of them and stopped and checked and everybody was all right. And once again, Mike and Debbie, the sheriff is asking residents in this area to stay uh, away from this scene. They're having enough trouble trying to control it as it is and determine what's going on and get to people who need help. Uh, if you're in the area, stay home. Reporting from Morgan County, Anna Werner, Wish TV, News 8. Okay. Thank you, Anna. Several towns in Hendricks County also saw some damage tonight. The town of Coatesville suffered extensive wind and hail damage. This mobile home was blown onto its side, but the owner wisely escaped injury by leaving it to stay with a relative. But a tree stopped it from being blown even further. And in Belleville, lightning may be to blame for igniting fires on power lines along US 40. Well, this second storm is hitting the downtown area pretty hard right now, but the first severe storm of the season, the one earlier tonight, spared downtown Indianapolis. Meteorologist Bill Mech continues our team coverage tonight, joining us from Mooresville now with a live update from there. Bill? That's right. We are in the Paddock Road area here in Morgan County, probably one of the hardest hit areas. We've had reports of at least four trailers that have been demolished, and in fact, we have some pictures of one of those trailers that has been demolished. In fact, they're not letting folks into a, a pretty large area here. A lot of folks were wondering if their, if their families were okay, what their houses even looked like, because they were away from their homes at the time that the tornado struck. What we've heard is that there are innumerable trees that are down around the area, power lines that are down. There's also some search and rescue going on, but we understand that almost all the folks now have been accounted for and that's certainly some good news right now we just have your basic garden variety thunder shower on the way but i heard you mention the term shell shock that's the impression we were getting from folks as the lightning's been crackling around us and the winds picked up here about 15 20 minutes ago we were having wind gusts around 40 to 50 miles per hour and we just have some light rain falling now but rich van wyke has been uh, visiting with the folks that are in a shelter that have been set up here and rich what can you tell us about it well first of all we're about two miles dead east of mooresville there's what's called fox hill it is it a housing addition perhaps as many as 50 homes I got, just, I got done speaking with the Morgan County Sheriff just a few minutes ago. He says just about every single home in that addition has some sort of damage. 
They are not able to get in there and do an accurate assessment, though, because he says there are so many trees down, so many powers down, lines down. It is going to be daylight before everyone gets in there. A little bit earlier, we visited the school just across from the street. We saw some of the pictures there, and we talked to some of the people whose homes have been damaged. <laughs> Had a mattress over it. And what went on while you were in that closet? Um, everybody was panicking. There was like four or five of us girls, and everybody was panicking. What did it sound like outside? Um, our ears were popping, and we just heard it go over us. I don't know how to explain it. A lot of wind. It was scary. And a lot of wind. And when you came out, what did you see? What does the neighborhood look like? Oh, uh, uh, there every, were... Everybody's house beside us was all trashed. Our house was the only one that didn't fall down. There was roofs everywhere, just flew off houses. There was cars everywhere, trees down, power lines everywhere. The cool two girls told me that during that storm, the winds and possible tornado, they literally hung on for life. Just off camera was one of the teenager's mom, and she seemed even more rattled than they were. She wasn't home. She said, we're just happy they're alive. So what? We're going to have to spend the night in a shelter here. Hopefully tomorrow morning we'll be able to get back to our homes and assess the damage. But it's going to be a long night for dozens of people here in Morgan County. All right, Rich Van Wyk, we are live out here in Morgan County with the dawning tomorrow will come the next job. That'll be the cleanup. And, of course, we'll continue to cover that story for you tomorrow. Reporting live from Morgan County, I'm Bill Meck, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Fortunate people, too, Bill. Those uh, trailers destroyed, but nobody injured. Well, there have been a few minor injuries that we have heard of. Uh, nothing terribly serious. That is something fortunate. But once again, it re reiterate, reiterate the point that a, a trailer is the, really the worst place to be in the event of a tornado. Mm -hmm. Okay, Bill Meck, reporting live from Mooresville tonight. Thank you. Meteorologist Bill Meck is, and we're going to join him live now from Mooresville. Bill? Well, the one piece of good news that we have out of Morgan County here is that all the lightning now appears to be off to the east, so the folks here maybe are able to breathe a sigh of relief. We've been hearing the stories of the folks as they've been coming out of the, the demolished trailer park. One of those folks whose trailer was destroyed, her name was Shonda Davis. This phone here was her link to the relatives in the outside world to tell them what had happened. Damn, I don't have a house. <laughs> my whole house is torn apart. I don't have no, my bedroom's laying across the street in the hills. My whole house is gone. I don't have a barn, I don't have nothing. I'm at a payphone at Daniel's. Yeah, Ronnie was in the trailer. I think he's got a broken leg. But he's still walking around. He's trying to get my car. He's trying to get everybody out of there. But I don't have nothing. Nothing at all. Tried it with four kids and don't have a thing. All right, we are live back here again in Morgan County. The folks are really beginning now to head on over to the shelter and get through the night, and then tomorrow the cleanup will begin here in Morgan County, where we're reporting live. I'm Bill Meck, Channel 13 Eyewitness News. Okay, thank you, Bill. But and now we're going to go back to Bob. We have some more information to pass along. Well, this just in now. They, uh, on Doppler radar, what they are getting indications of, the possibility of a tornado just to the west of Bedford, moving in a northeast direction of 35 miles an hour. Thus, a tornado warning has been issued for Lawrence and Monroe counties until 12.15 in the morning. This is a tornado warning now for Lawrence and Monroe County, so if you live in those areas, you should seek shelter immediately. That's until 12.15. It is west of Bedford, and uh, these storms have been moving toward the northeast at about 35 miles an hour. Moving pretty quickly. Okay. Okay, thanks, Bob. And we'll be back in just a minute with more. Local forecasts, information you can plan on, because now we show it on the 8th of every hour. Local on the 8th on the Weather Channel. Saturday morning. This is Will Annan and I'm Cheryl Lemke. It's the same thing that we've been talking about for days now and that is the threat for severe weather. So another stormy start to the weekend I'm afraid for a lot of folks across the east. That's true. We saw a ton of it last night also the, the previous night as well and looks like we'll be looking at some more today all mm -hmm. the way from New York down to Ohio all the way down to northeastern Texas. So once again if you live in the eastern part of the country stay tuned to the Weather Channel. 
We'll give you all the updates. But right now, let's take you right to the satellite picture. It's going to reveal where the, some of the stronger storms are, which are still developing now from around Buffalo, New York, down into West Virginia, clearing Columbus, Ohio at this time. But we're still getting numerous warnings coming out on our printers now from Kentucky and Tennessee. To be looking at some more strong storms developing later on this afternoon over northeastern Texas, too. This is where all that juicy tropical air is right now. It's over the eastern third of the country. Dry air last night was punching into the Midwestern part of the country, and boy, did that ever turn the tables across a good chunk of Illinois and parts of Indiana. At least 31 reports of tornadoes now. One, uh, at least one person has died overnight from these tornadoes, and we'll have more on that situation a little bit later on. Let's take you back to last night and show you exactly what did happen. Wherever you see a red triangle on the weather map here, at least a, a confirmed tornado was reported. And you can see Illinois once again in the parts of Indiana. And those storms dissipated somewhat as they moved into Ohio, Kentucky, and Tennessee earlier on this morning. And now they're beginning to cruise as far eastward as extreme western New York State, Pennsylvania, and West Virginia too. But they're going to get stronger later on this afternoon. The current watches and warnings, where you see the yellow shading, we're looking at severe thunderstorm watches out, which cover now parts of West Virginia and Kentucky. The red shaded areas, we are looking at tornado warnings out, or tornado watches out now. For Middle Tennessee, a brand new tornado watch has now been issued for parts of Alabama, northern Mississippi, and again, it looks like later on this afternoon, things are going to be lighting up again on the old radar map with some numerous uh, severe weather watches and warnings coming out, and we'll be looking at some big-time thunderstorms one more time. Well, our forecast, fortunately, doesn't look quite as bad as the weather that we've been enduring in the last, oh, 25, yeah. you know, 30 hours. So. Right. Things are improving today, and uh, a little warm out there. Actually, kind of a nice day to be outdoors, mm -hmm. but uh, we really want to take you back to what happened yesterday afternoon, sort of give you a timeline of going through. And the real, the buzzwords this morning have been straight-line winds versus was it a tornado, and it's always tough to tell at night because you can actually... You actually cannot see that, so we're going to try to explain that in our graphic segment here in just a moment, so hang with us. All right, let's take a look at the numbers here this morning. We're in the 60s in just about all locations. We're now 63 out at the airport, 62 still downtown, and uh, a very nice start to the morning as we take a look outside at SkyCam. A great start to your weekend because uh, most of the severe weather now has moved into Ohio and down to Kentucky, and that'll continue for a good part of today. There's a look at 465 on the north side, uh, traffic moving along smoothly this smoothly this morning. Temperature 63 degrees and the humidity now down to 80 percent. Wind southwest at 17. The barometer still falling at this hour for that cold front to come through. That'll bring down the humidity for tonight. All right, now straight line winds. You get a big strong updraft in the storm in the front of the storm and then in the middle there's a strong downdraft. It pushes all the way down to the ground and then it spreads out. What you see are objects that look like they have fallen like a bunch of dominoes. Trees falling one after another. A lot of times the trees are uprooted. They've been blown down like this. So that's usually the sign of a straight-line wind. A tornado, a different scenario. What it looks like when you see a tornado is the winds are being pulled up. It's a strong or severe updraft. Trees are twisted out like a corkscrew. And we've heard some eyewitness uh, news or reports here this morning. Uh, some of the people that were eyewitnessing this uh, funnel cloud possibly last night said it did look like it was sort of twisted out. So that may be the sign of a tornado. And the damage is blown in several directions, not all blown down to one side. So that's the difference this morning as we look at Chopper 13 throughout the morning. Keep an eye out for the difference between the tornado winds and the straight line. You can uh, pretty much tell from above what it looks like as far as where the trees have fallen down and as far as the damage. All right, now we'll give you the timeline as far as the uh, weather was concerned yesterday. 3 o'clock, we're in great shape. 79 degrees, looks like we're having a fantastic spring day. However, the ingredients came in from the south with the moisture and that warm air. We had some dry air move in from the west that helps lift these showers and thunderstorms. And look at the explosion right through Indiana, Illinois, right through the afternoon. Severe weather moved through the state. Now, it's improved somewhat today. The frontal system has moved off. This is about midnight, and we'll show you from midnight to around 9 o'clock this morning. As you see, everything now is starting to push away, and we even see the breaks in the clouds. That's why we're getting the sunshine today right there. Most of the energy will stay Flying away. westerly along Smith Valley Road this morning, we can see that power crews have their, uh, have their hands full this morning trying to restore electricity uh, to this side of the county and uh, this side of the roadway down here. Moving slightly north of Smith Valley Road, we can see now the, the sheer power of what went on looking through a farm field of debris that is left over from several farm buildings, a grain bin, a grain silo that has been torn up by what went through here last night. 
And then as we often see in the urban sprawl areas right next to a farm, a new housing complex that is going up. And as you can see there, several of the homes, not housing complex, but new neighbors, several of the uh, homes that were under construction this morning, last night, or rather last night, were slated for destruction. And those homes simply uh, blown up in the weather that went through this area last night. I'm Rich Van Wyke. I'm reporting live from Chopper 13. We're going to be up for the remainder of this newscast, giving you exclusive looks at the damage and the people whose lives have been affected by the storms that raked across central Indiana last night. Robin? That's right. Many lives affected indeed. Thank you very much, Rich. Well, people in Morgan County are also dealing with a lot of damage this morning following last night's wicked storms. Channel 13 Eyewitness News reporter David McAnally continu continues with our team coverage from that location. David, how are things looking and how are people feeling this morning? Well, you know, a lot of people, I think, are trying to work through their frustration and disappointment just to get to the job at hand. Look back here. Doug Blake's going to pan back for you and show you some of the uh, recovery efforts underway. It's going to be a big day for the Visqueen vendors, obviously. People working to seal up the holes in their roofs. The chainsaw folks, they're out here clearing the debris away from their homes so they can get cars out of garages, uh, get the weight off of their homes. And back here, back behind me now, the uh, power companies, REMC, has its crew in the area putting in new poles so that they can get lines up to restore power anywhere from 24 to 48 hours. One woman was telling us that uh, the area they are in, they were told, could be two to three days. That uh, obviously a, a lot of widespread problems here. Let's go to some videotape. Uh, this is your house, yeah. heavily damaged. Anybody at home at the time? Uh, no, there wasn't. You know, like I said, I, I was at work up in Indianapolis and the uh, old lady had the kids and they were all at the movie, which was a very good thing because, you know, all, all the kids' bedrooms are upstairs and they norm normally play and stuff upstairs. And it's just, thank God, nobody got hurt. As people clean up, they're also debating. State Emergency Management says initially it looks like it was straight line winds that moved through here and not a tornado. But if you get a different story if you talk to some of the people who live here. Come through the privacy fence, knocked it down, and went right on through here. Right. Then moved over to your neighbor's yard? Yeah, went right on through there. And you actually saw the spinning funnel cloud? Yeah. yeah. What went through your mind when you saw that? <laughs> I, I don't know, just scared to death. Um, as folks clean up here, the state emergency management director, some of the governor's staff on the ground surveying the area, they say they're going to leave that debate about straight line winds versus tornado up to the National Weather Service. Uh, and uh, that data is already being studied right now. That's the latest situation from here. David McAnally reporting uh, from uh, near, near Mooresville. All right, David, thank you. Certainly the blessing is that uh, no lives were lost and no extensive, extensive damage to, to human life. So appreciate your report, David. Thank you. Thank you, David. Well, the storm also hit hard in Johnson County. There, several buildings were leveled, including a Domino's Pizza. Eyewitness News reporter Jane Harrington is live now in Johnson County with a first look at the damage. Jane, we saw that Domino's Pizza earlier. No kidding. My, it, is, it is just amazing. Uh, imagine, I mean, can you imagine, Kevin, being inside of this building and actually making it out without a single scratch? I mean, look at this incredible destruction. You're seeing the collapsed portion of the building here, and I can tell you, a lot of the roof is gone. A number of the people inside, employees and customers, made it safely to the cooler, and that's where they spent the duration of the storm. However, Dave, another employee, was outside in the parking lot and he didn't make it to the cooler. Where did you go? Uh, I, I made it around to uh, the garage in the back to shield my car from the, the hail. And at, right as I closed the door, the, the roof was coming off. Where did you go? I managed to get into the, the office back there and I was laying down on the floor in the bathroom. How so, frightening was that, David? Um, kind of hard to explain. The really Really, honestly, there wasn't that much fear because there's nothing you can do about it. But, it, I mean, the helplessness really is the... Well, and if you think David was helpless during that uh, storm, imagine being on the road in a vehicle, as Kim was, a pizza, um, I'm sorry, a Domino's delivery lady. What'd you do? Um, 
just stayed in the truck for a while, um, but as the winds got a little bit faster, um, the driveway I was in where I was delivering, they told me to come, they wait for me to come in and I took refuge in the house and just stayed in the house and, and um, kind of visited with them and just waited the storm out until I could get back, back towards here. Amazingly, with all the damage here in Johnson County, no serious injuries at all. A lot of people here think they are extremely fortunate. Kevin. Jane, uh, some amazing stories there. Again, no injuries there um, in Johnson County? None serious. Uh, we understand that a few people may have been hit by flying debris, but uh, not seriously at all. Not uh, enough to require any hospitalization. Thanks very much. Thanks. Well, good morning. Uh, we're coming to you a half hour earlier today because of special programming on CBS at noon. By daybreak, they were counting the losses across Indiana in the aftermath of a series of extremely violent storms. There are some reported injuries and damage in some areas as extensive. We'll have reports in just a moment. Uh, there were warnings. Bad weather was on the way, but when it comes, there's nothing to do but get out of the way if you can. And Steve, the damage is not surprising considering the force of those storms, really. We had a couple of rounds of last night of some intense weather, and it did leave quite a mark on central Indiana. I want to show you a little graphic okay. of one of the uh, storms that we had roll through the area. Now, this was round one. This is an isolated thunderstorm cell that started just around the Terre Haute area. We had a report of a funnel cloud there along with lots of hail as the storms moved out of Illinois. As they moved through central Indiana, baseball-sized hail. And again, these are just a few of the reports we had. We had numerous reports of quarter-dime-sized hail, but all the way up to baseball-sized hail in around Greencastle, also into Hendricks County, and then the reports of tornado. tornadoes, at least three of them coming down with this first round of storms, but then in total... 23 reports of tornadoes, not all of those confirmed at this point. And with the second round of storms, we had stronger mm -hmm. winds. Winds gusting up to 65 to 80 miles an hour. Really? Mount Comfort Airport, uh, amateur radio reported there that we had a wind gust up to 80 miles per hour. Wow. The good news is all of that is past us. Things calming down. We're in store for a pretty nice weekend. The details on that are coming up in just a bit. Okay, now the details on the damage. Yes. Tornadoes are scattered about by the sudden onslaught of a mighty storm. The 1996 tornado season began violently last night. We have reports on the damage. We'll begin with News 8's Rick Hightower, who is... We're standing on Fox Hill in Morgan County, about a five-mile radius from this... ...through here uh, last evening around 8 or 9 o'clock. Now, uh, there's, this used to be a trailer house. Uh, Michael, follow me. I'll show you where the foundation of the trailer used to sit, but you can see it's gone now. And as you look to the right, you see the twisted frame left by the strong winds or tornado, whatever hit this trailer, and then the trailer on down in the gully with uh, fiberglass uh, insulation and everything just strewn about all the way down into a creek. And you can see trees here in this uh, part of Morgan County were just toppled like toothpicks overnight. As we drove down the road today, we saw trees just surrounding several homes, but uh, most of these homes were lucky, spared down in the uh, lower sections of this uh, area called Fox Hill. Most of those up on the hill did receive some damage, but uh, power crews worked all morning. They're working phone lines back up. Some people do have telephones here, others do not. Some people do not have homes. One of them is Dorothy McGee. She lost her home. The sky turned green and uh, uh, then hail started coming down. It was about the size of a quarter, I would say. And the wind started getting really bad, so I shut the front door, which was real hard to do because the wind got real bad. And I sent the kids in the bathtub, and I ran in there with them, and it was hard to shut the bathroom door because of the wind. I don't know if the part of the roof had already blown off or what, but uh, all we heard was uh, glass breaking, you know, and things flying around. We didn't even, you know, we were praying. Dorothy and her three children, very lucky. Uh, many folks up here very lucky as no one was seriously injured. You can see uh, what's left of this trailer down here just across the road. Another trailer with a couple inside actually rolled over. The frame blew out, the top blew off before it rolled over. They were not injured, just a couple of uh, cuts and scrapes. Now we were told that uh, about 100 people up here on Fox Hill, according to Larry Mason, the township trustee, are out of a place to stay. Almost all of them are out of a telephone and uh, everyone up here still without electricity as power is being restored. A shelter has been set up at a local school, a local elementary school by the Red Cross. Not many takers there yet, but uh, most people seem to be staying with family. And again, Ray, the best thing about all of this, no one seriously injured some very lucky folks up here on Fox Hill in Morgan County.
Yeah, Rick, that's really nothing short of miraculous. As you look around the scene there, uh, the, the, the devastation is really incredible. I've seen a lot of scenes like this in covering tornadoes over the years, but uh, these folks uh, escaped with their lives, and that's the best thing about it. Okay, very good. Thank you, Rick Hightower, Morgan County. The storms have knocked out power to homes across central Indiana. Residents of Bargersville are being urged to avoid water usage until at least 2 o'clock this afternoon. The main water pump has been affected by the storm-related power outages. Indianapolis Power and Light reports 10,000 homes are still without power this morning. IPL hopes to have power back on by the end of the day. We'll have the updates on the storm damage throughout the day with a complete wrap-up on News 8 at 6 o'clock. Uh, also, uh, heavy damage is reported in portions of Johnson County and Southern Marion County. That's where we find News 8's Anne-Marie Tiernan, who joins us with a report. Anne-Marie? Well, good morning, Ray. Yeah, we are just northeast of where Rick Hightower just filed his report. We're in the front yard of Rick Fred Morales' home, and you can see that he lost his roof last night. We have some of his neighbors here helping him out today. Mr. Morales, at this hour, is trying to find a storage bin to put all his furniture in. His furniture was not destroyed, but his home very much of it was. You can see there are parts of insulation and glass here in the front yard. His chimney here is toppled over on the side of the house. We are in the Valley Ridge Farm subdivision, which is near Stop 11 and Bluff Road in southern Marion County. We're just north of the Johnson County line. And you can see down this strip, this is where it looks in the neighborhood like the tornado came through. And very typical of what we see when a tornado hits, some homes have serious damage and a home next door really have no damage whatsoever. Nine homes in this area did suffer some damage, three of them severe damage. You can see here straight at the end of the street, another home, just like Mr. Morales' home, lost the roof. Fortunately, in this area, not that many injuries. We had a lady who uh, had an asthma attack. She got a little panicked during the uh, storm last night. But other than that, most people okay today, just trying to figure out where they're going to stay tonight. Many stayed with neighbors, putting their things in storage, and, of course, cleaning up. Now, this home, at Fred Morales' home, he does not have a basement. And so last night when this storm came through, one lady was up in this bedroom and was laying in a bed. When the storm came through, she came downstairs to uh, get in a front hall closet, and the wall came in and forced the headboard forward and smashed right down on the bed. And that's where Virginia Morales would have been had she not come downstairs. Now, they do not have a basement. You can see here the roof coming down in through the foyer area. There's a front hall closet here on the front right side. That's where three adult women last night were cramped while Mr. Morales held out here in the hallway. You can see the damage inside. They've gotten uh, lots of uh, things fluttered around and they're having some problems today trying to figure out where they're going to stay tonight. Now you can see Mayor Stephen Goldsmith is here. He's surveying the damage. He says that the plans are for the city to bring in some dumpsters. They're working on bringing in some landscape and tree crews to help clean up the branches in this area. And uh, of course, we're gonna have more on this cleanup throughout the day as this, these families here dig out from the storm that was here last night, Ray. Okay, I'm Marie Tennant, thank you very much. Of course, all the municipal help is welcome, but it ultimately boils down to individual efforts at cleaning up. That's right. Thank you, I'm Marie Tennant.